Hey class, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some art history things, so stay tuned as we learn some culture. Art history today, that, the picture that I picked for you guys was the sarcophagus of King Tutankhamun. The reason it chose this is because as we're getting into the beginning of coil pots and pinch pots and we're getting through structure, uh, definitely want you guys to see. And big thing for me during this term, I, I always try and focus on pieces that are based around works by dead people. Now for uh, King Tut and looking at his sarcophagus, the things I want you guys to notice in this, first off let's look at it, the ornateness of the sarcophagus is solid gold. Now there's other elements in there besides gold, uh, which we'll get into when we talk about the color aspects of it, but the three elements and principles of art that I wanted to discuss with this point are form, color, and shapes. Uh, shapes because of the number of shapes and images that are used to for the decoration as well as the illustration over the entire coffin. Uh, starting off with form, the structure of the piece is curved across the top and then the base line is just a square block. The reason they did this is because this is the burial chamber that the uh, pharaoh was placed in. So they placed the dead, the mummified corpse inside of here because it's supposed to be the uh, the chariot that the pharaoh rides on into the afterlife and it's supposed to be the most ornate vessel that it, that it can be earlier on what they would do is they didn't just build you a gold sarcophagus they would also put in everything you would need in the afterlife so we're talking um, food lots of food uh, the canopic jars which hold all their organs um, everything was buried with them even though that during the modification process they removed that from the body those elements were still buried with them. Um, so you had food, they had chairs, they had all sorts of furniture. Uh, one of the earlier ones, they had an entire boat. We're talking like the boat that's like 60 feet long was buried with them because it was a chariot to take them to the afterlife. Now, they weren't the only ones that did this either. Um, in the same, I don't want to say the same time period, but within uh, our understanding of old people, uh, the, Nor the, the Norse, the Vikings, they also did the same thing where they were buried with their ship. Uh, that also brought on the, the current ritual we, that we see in movies and stuff where you have um, them build a boat and then they put the body on it and they send it out to sea and then they shoot an arrow, flaming arrow to light the whole thing on fire. It's to send them on their final voyage. It all comes stems back from that same, you're on a boat to carry you to the afterlife. It's a, it's a constant thought. Uh, but looking again through that form, how the how the shape of the sarcophagus is. So then you're looking at um, the 3D elements of the face, which I'm then going to transfer into shape. So the way that they use shape in the image here, uh, along the sides, you can see that chevron pattern, which is the so you can see the chevron pattern that's along the side here. The way that they use the line, the shape, so that all of these radiate upwards towards the face. Uh, you have the feathers right here which is to be indicative of horus or a bird-like creature it's for flight so that you're again carried on to the afterlife so that you're promoting a just transference of from the physical plane to the spiritual that's what that says for blue is also used in that realm because blue is a calming element blue is a calming color it's to provide that you are more somber in depth and but it's to uh, give a different enlightening to yourself uh, to some of the other shapes that we have on here, you have the repeating lines, which would be repetition, which is a different element of art, uh, between the gold and the blue on the headpiece. However, the way that they use this, it's also for night and day. For the sun, the rays of gold, the sunlight, the warmth, uh, the blue, night, the sleep, that kind of thing. So there's the way there's a lot of that color combination, the way those things work together is that it promotes uh, your, your grand death. Uh, for color, you have really just three different colors along this entire thing which is gold blue and red and blue and red are not gold they are is they are uh, it's an enameled metal so what they would do is they would take the metal and they put it into a furnace with glass or uh, like sea glass river glass so because they're right there by the Nile as sediment comes down the Nile they would take those elements out of the water they would put it on top of other metals heat it up and in the furnace it would turn into a different stone because it would go through metamorphosis remember uh, 
middle school science classes where you're dealing with the formation of rock. So in the volcano, the magma melts down the rock and it turns into a liquefied rock. And then when it comes back out of the volcano, it turns, it cools down, turns into a new rock. Metamorphous, igneous, sedimentary. Yeah, so you're taking the sediment out of the river, which is a sedimentary stone, and then you're re-melting it, re-changing, physically changing that into another metal. And they put, they'd use it to uh, enamel the gold so you get different colors, so that's your, how the colors are actually created. Indigo and the blues were not, were most of the time we're thinking of as plants. Uh, but there was stone sediment that would produce a blue hue as well. Uh, as always, if you guys have comments, raise your hand down in the comments below. As always, I will see you guys next class. Other than that, I'll see you guys later. Ciao.